Um, it's really dark. Quality is going to be really bad. Uh, it is just about five, and we are getting on the road. It's spring break, and that means it's time for Gulf War. We go every year, and honestly, it's an event that I both look forward to and dread. It is 11.48. Um, we are somewhere in Louisiana. I don't actually know where we are, um, but we just stopped for like gas and to get out and stretch for a little bit. Uh, we have an hour and a half, an hour and 20 minutes to go. I'm ready to be out of the truck. <laughs> Five o'clock is an early start time, and I'm tired. <laughs> we start prepping in January for an event that happens in March, and then spend a month recovering afterwards. It takes a lot out of me, and somehow never seems to pour enough back into my cup to break even. This year, though, things are going to be different. Chris and friends, welcome to Gulf War. Today, we are basically starting war. War doesn't officially start until Saturday at noon, but partner and I came out on Thursday to get everything set up and get the tent layout for camp all done. So we got about half of that done Thursday and then the other half done Friday morning before the rain. So the rain happened in the afternoon and it was a doozy. We had some thunder, some lightning, um, lots of rain. Luckily, we stayed dry, our stuff stayed dry. The tent was fine. No repeat of Gulf NATO a few years ago, which was scary as heck. Everybody is just about here. Everybody has set up camp. We're all garbed up. And I think in just a little bit, I'm gonna mosey on down to Merchant's Row and see if I can find some fabric for my Gulf Wars project. Let's go. I sit at the center of a Venn diagram of neurodivergencies that make long camping events a literal nightmare for me. The disruption of routine, the lack of privacy and quiet, the poor sleep, and the general chaos all contribute to war being a week-long panic attack that I'm very good at hiding. Instead of just resigning myself to yet another year of low-grade misery, I'm building in some accommodations that should help me have a better time. I often feel at loose ends throughout war because I don't have anything to focus on. I've taken classes and volunteered and helped partner with fighter support, but it's not the same thing as having a thing to do. So this year I am going to make myself a Gulf War hood. Trying to decide what color I want. I have a blue hood. I have a white hood with red lining. I have a pink hood with linen. And I have my rainbow hood. Do you have a green yeah. hood? I do not have a green hood. Which green do I want? I like this one, but I think it's, I don't think it's green enough to read as green. But it reads more gray. But it reads more gray. Or should I get that green? I'll leave it out if you're looking at it. <laughs> it is a nice green. Can I have a yard and a half? Thank you so much. Oh, wait, hang on real quick. I see threads in there. I'm gonna go look. Charcoal 40 slash two. I'm gonna hand that back to you. All right, perfect. Thank you so much. Thank you. We are back from shopping and I'm pretty pleased with what I managed to find at Merchant's Row. So I have got this lovely wool. It feels really good. It's got a little bit of kind of a heathered look to it, which is nice. And I don't have a green hood yet. So I think this is gonna be a really good addition to the stable of hoods. I also found some linen thread. The only problem is I couldn't find a good uh, color match for this. Awen Deweaver is not here yet. So tomorrow, before I start sewing, I'll probably cut this out tomorrow. Tomorrow, I will go down to Merchants again and see if Awen Deweaver's here and has a better color match in either a silk or linen thread that I can use. I wanted to try and source everything that I could on site to make sure that I was truly making a Gulf Wars hood. So if I can't find anything from Eowyn, I'm going to use this rather than the thread that I brought with me because 
I want to use stuff from here. I'm walking around for a while and I'm tired. I think I'm just going to go lay down and have a little nap. Nap, dinner, cutting this out tomorrow. It is the next day and it's still a little chilly out, which is why I'm in all of my wools. I am going to head down to Merchants to see if Eowyn is here yet. I may also get some thicker silk because I kind of want to do dagging on this hood. I didn't bring my dagging expansion, so I'd have to freehand it. I'm not sure about that. We'll see. If that works, I think I'd like to finish the edging with like a blanket stitch or something. Here we go. Okay, I think I'm going to get these. I think this will be good. I don't need another Turkish spindle. Yep, that would be brilliant. Thank you so much. Now that I have all my materials, I can get started. I'm not going to go too deeply into construction details. I have plenty of other hood videos that cover all of that. As I mentioned earlier, I brought my Lindenium hood pattern from home. In order to make sure I had enough room for the leafy dagging I wanted to add, I cut about four inches off the bottom of the hood. Using the extant dagging as a guide, I drafted out a leaf shape to add to that hem of the hood. I folded the sketch in half while cutting in order to get a symmetrical template. The only downside to making an on-site hood is working with fabric that hasn't been pre-washed. But since this is wool and I plan to hand wash and spot clean the finished hood, I'm not terribly worried about fabric shrinkage. I debated not bringing my pattern and just drafting directly onto the fabric in the name of sourcing everything on site, but I'm glad I took the lazy, I mean efficient, way out because I could mark each dag placement easily. I did end up eliminating one or two dags on the gore because of the reduced spacing around the circumference and adding half an inch of width to the back seam of the hood, again for spacing purposes.
Did I bring my crappy scissors in order to not accidentally ruin my good ones while camping? Yes. Did I regret that decision for the entirety of the cutting process? Also yes. I'm sewing the hood with AON silk thread in the smaller 60 over 2 size, using a combination of backstitch for the seams that have greater tension on them and running backstitch for the seams that don't. And of course, I'm setting my gores in the usual way, starting from the point and working my way down the side seams, then felling the allowances. In this case, just laying the raw edges flat against the fabric and sewing them down with a running stitch. The wool is bulky enough that I don't want to fold the raw edges under like I normally do. If I notice the raw edges raveling later, I can always sew a filler strand of yarn along that raw edge like I did in my Viking coat project. And then I will reinforce the point of the gore with some satin stitching that catches both sides of the seam, just for the extra strength.
The only hem I'm sewing for the hood is the face opening with a single turn and running stitch just like the seam allowances. The dagging hem will be finished in a different way. Thank you to all of my current and continuing Kofi members, especially my newest member, Wild and Free History. Your support and the support of all of my members and croissants makes it easier to do what I do and provide quality content for everyone. Thank you all so much. And I'm sorry I forgot to get footage of our meetup at war. Next year, I promise. Stick around after this brief commercial break to watch me finish up the hood. It's go for, of course it rained. I'm taking advantage of it to finish up my audiobook, T. Kingfisher's What Feasts at Night, have some tea, Harney and Sun salted caramel this time, in one of my new lobster rose mugs, I may have bought too many of them, and work on hemming the hood. I'm using Eowyn's 20 over 2 silk thread in a plummy purple to do a buttonhole stitch around the entire hem. This will protect the cut edge and prevent the wool fabric from unraveling. It wouldn't work on linen or cotton, at least not with the stitches spaced so far apart. The fabric would just fray. Between the rain and the forced break because of partner's illness, I managed to get everything done on site. Just kidding. I spent the entire seven hour ride home finishing the hemming, which as I should have predicted, took me longer than expected. I'm still counting it as a success though, since I wasn't actually home from war yet. <laughs> 